This May, bring your friends and family out for family convention with thought-provoking teaching on Sundays and prayer meetings for your family on Fridays. Also, attention all couples. Backed by popular demand is your cruise along the River Thames. Take in all the London landmarks while you dance the evening away and rekindle your romance. And singles, we haven't forgotten about you. Prepare for a bank holiday weekend of fun, 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 and food, food, food. And it all takes place with a prayer meeting on Friday, a Q&A on Saturday, and a barbecue to remember on bank holiday Monday. If you have God-centered people within the home, your home will be a God-centered home. If the family must thrive, it begins with the father. A thriving family begins with a thriving father. A thriving family begins with a God-fearing father. If a father fears the Lord, the family will thrive. A father who walks in the way of the Lord, a father who fears the Lord, is the beginning of a thriving family. Welcome to Maximize Live, the television broadcast from New Wine Church London. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Our mandate is to challenge you to be all you can be. So get ready to be encouraged, enriched and empowered. You will never be the same again. Now here is your host, Pastor Michael Olaware. We are so glad you have joined us on another edition of Maximize Life. On this program, our aim is to challenge you to be all that you can be. I am Michael Olaware, the senior pastor of New One Church London. The picture of a thriving family is illustrated in the writing of Psalmist in Psalm 128. This scripture forms the basis for the message I'm sharing today. As we understand what a blossoming family looks like, today's message is titled, Building a Thriving Family. Sit back and let's enjoy God's work together. I will be back shortly to round up. God bless you. In building a thriving family, it is important to understand why a thriving family is necessary. Because if you will build something, you need to know the purpose for building whatever it is that you want to build. And so let's go in our Bible to Genesis chapter 1. We'll read from verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that move on the earth. God created man in his image. That's what we just learned. And after his likeness, man was created in God's image. And man was now given a mandate to be fruitful and multiply. The Bible was very specific when he said God made man in his image and after his likeness. Then God told man be fruitful and multiply. In other words, God is saying I have made you in certain ways in my image and my likeness. Now you must be fruitful and bring forth a replica, representation of my image and likeness through the agency of fruitfulness. Through the agency of fruitfulness. The essence of family is to reveal Christ, to reveal God into our world through the agency of 
fruitfulness. Man was created to show forth God. Man was created to reveal God. The mandate, be fruitful, was accomplished through the union of man and woman in marriage. Let me say that again. The mandate that God placed upon mankind, be fruitful and multiply, that was accomplished through the union of man and woman who are married, praise the name of the Lord, the union of man and woman in marriage is, is uh, facilitated by what we call sexual intercourse in marriage. And this was ordained by God as a vehicle for fulfillment of the mandate to be fruitful. A thriving family is a family that is built after the image of God. And after the likeness of God. A family that demonstrates the character, the nature, and the value of God. That's what a thriving family is all about. A thriving family is a Christ-centered family. A thriving family is a family that is full of God, modeling Christ to our world. A family that is in essence flourishing and thriving it's a family that is rooted in the purpose of God. Let me say this to you, church. Family is the essence of civilization. Family. you got to hear me today. Because this is very, very important. The problem of our world today is a problem that is rooted or that stems from family. If you can get the issues of family right, we can correct the ills in our society. Family is the essence of civilization. Family is the hope of the future. Family is designed to provide, to provide cure for all social, psychological, emotional, and spiritual ills of our society. A thriving family produces a thriving nation. The success of any nation could be traced to the success in families. Everything that is wrong in a nation can be traced back to the problems in families. Everything. Every crime in our society, every antisocial behaviors in our community, every act of lawlessness in our nation could be traced back to the breakdown of families. Young people are in prison today because they are angry at their parents. Maybe at their fathers who were never there. A thriving family is the key to a stable, healthy, and productive nation. Let me say that again. A thrive because you've got to pay attention to what God has entrusted to your hands so that you can build your family to look like God and to function like God. A thriving family is the key to a stable, healthy, and productive nation. Family is so important that every other institution is predicated on it. Every. Family is the channel by which God intends for his image to be revealed. This is why Satan is on the rampage to destroy families. And we don't seem to understand this, that the devil is after families. The devil is after families. Because he knows that if he could destroy family, he could control everything else from that point. You know, sir, if he could destroy family, he could control everything else from that point. Today, I want to share with you the picture or the portrait of a thriving family. What does a thriving family look like? So that you can take something away with you that becomes a template, a template upon which you want to build your own family. 
Praise the name of the Lord. I encourage you, pay attention to your family. Pay attention. There is spiritual warfare out there. The devil is contending with the church. And if the devil can lay claim on the families, the devil will control the universe. That is why you cannot just get up and disappear from your home. How self selfish most of us have been. Most of us don't think about the next generation. Most of us have refused to think about what happens to the seed that come out of you. Because there is conflict and you refuse to resolve the conflict and you carry your back. You say goodbye without thinking of what happens to the ones you are leaving behind. We have a generation in our world today who do not know their fathers. We have a generation who do not know what fatherhood looks like. We have a generation where, who, who they are looking for a place to belong. That's why they end up in gangs. We have a generation who don't know what love and acceptance is. That is why a woman, a teenage woman will offer his body thinking if they offer their body to somebody, they are accepted. Thinking they are accepted. Because Papa never told them that they are ever accepted. And they're looking for acceptance everywhere. Family issue is the most important issue. Messages on family, most important messages. And if you can get family issue right, we are okay. God has called you and me. It's not an accident that you are a Christian. God has called you and me to model and to reveal Christ to our world, to the, to the unit of families. The question is, instead of revealing Christ to the world, some of us have revealed more of the devil to the world. We are not patient. If it's not your way, it can, it can work. It can work. If it's not your way. And so the wife is very cantangrous, antagonistic. And the husband is very unyielding. And where you have two people who are so self-centered, who think about themselves, only themselves. And they don't know they are destroying the lives of the children. Let me tell you. Let me open my heart to you. Me and you will not always be here forever. All right, only this side is answering. Whether you like it or not, I will tell you. I said, me and you will not always be here forever. Have you thought about what happens after you've gone? Have you thought about what happens, what will happen to the seed of your body after you've gone? Have you thought about that? I'm reminded of David before he said goodbye to planet Earth. Oh my God. He set a foundation for Solomon. He said to himself, Solomon will not start where I started. Everything that Solomon needed, he provided for. He provided human resources. He provided money, gold, silver. He provided wisdom. He provided instruction. He spent time with him. He encouraged him. He said, be courageous and build. Do the work of the Lord. After he impacted the next generation, then he said goodbye. That's a man. That's a man. Praise the name of the Lord. We got to get it right. We got to get it right. We got to pay attention to the families that God has called us to build so that we may reveal Christ to our world. Let's go in our Bible to Psalm 128. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and you shall be well, and it shall be well with you. Verse 3, your wife shall be like a fruitful vine, in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be. Thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you out of Zion 
And may you see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Yes, may you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. The scripture we read, very profound, started by talking about the impact of a person who fears the Lord. And everybody should, every one of us. A thriving family begins with a personal commitment with God. The Bible says, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his way. Everyone who fears the Lord, blessed. Notice, before God spoke about family, he spoke about the condition of the people within the family. Family is about people. If people within the family are fine, the family is fine. You cannot have a happy home without a happy people living in it. The starting place for rebuilding the home is to rebuild the people who live within the home by introducing them to Christ. If you have God-centered people within the home, your home will be a God-centered home. Is that clear? There are lots of family who are going through disorder and confusion. And instead of fixing the real problems, which is to introduce themselves to Christ, because Christ is the problem solver, they are looking at using material things to create happiness. They are looking at using material things to buy love of each other. Whenever people walk in fear of the Lord, the Bible said they will eat the fruit of their labor and they will be happy and they will know wellness. That's for everybody. But something happened in verse 3 that I'd like you to pay your attention to. In verse 3, the story changed and the Bible says your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very earth of your house. Oh, wait a minute. God was speaking to Father here. Say your wife will be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house. Your children like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. If the father fears the Lord, he will impart his wife and he will impart his children. That's what the scripture is saying. If the father fears the Lord, the children, the wife, they will know the impact of his fear of the Lord. God began to address the father because the father is responsible for setting the tone by which his family functions. Let me talk to you men. The father, you are responsible for setting the tone by which your family functions. The father is viewed by God as the representative head of the family. The father is the one to whom and through whom God communicates. And God expects you to take whatever he shares with you and share it with your family, your wife and your children. In other words, the fathers are called to provide leadership. Fathers are called to provide leadership. The last time I checked, leaders solve problems. They don't create problems. The last time I checked, praise the name of the Lord. Fathers are called to represent God in the affairs of their homes. The challenge we have in the church of Jesus is that it's taking it's taking uh, a lot of efforts to get men back to the place of their responsibility. If the family must thrive, church, it begins with the father. If the family must thrive, it begins with the father. A thriving family begins with a thriving father. A thriving family begins with a God-fearing father. If a father fears the Lord, the family will thrive. A father who walks in the way of the Lord, a father who fears the Lord, 
is the beginning of a thriving family. As goes the fatherhood, so goes the family. Church, there is a dirt of fatherhood on the earth. There is a dirt of fatherhood on the earth. And I believe God today that you will hear me, every father in this house, you will hear me to take your place of responsibility and make your mark. You will hear me because your children need you, your wife need you. They need you to provide leadership, to provide guidance. They need you to model and to reveal Christ to them. Verse 3 of Psalm 128 says, your wife will be like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house and your children like all leaf plant around your table. That will be the testimony of a man who fears the Lord. That's what the Bible says. If a man fears the Lord, then as a result, he receives the blessing of the Lord and the wives are like a fruitful vine. And the Bible said the children, they are flourishing like all leaf plant around your table. Verses 3 and 4 define specifically what a thriving family is all about. Verses 3 and 4. A man who fears the Lord and walks in his way. Number one. Number two. Having a wife who is like a fruitful vine in the very heart of his house. Number three. Children who are like olive plants all around his table. The man, the wife, the children. The man who fears the Lord. The wife who is fruitful and the children who are like olive plant. If you can get that three elements right, then the rest is easy. Praise the name of the Lord. If you can get the three right, then we are set out to build a thriving family. What does it really mean for a man to fear the Lord? I'm glad you asked. The fear, to fear God means to revere God. It means to respect God. A man who fears the God, who fears God, sorry, is a man who esteems God and His Word. He's a man who makes God his priority. He's a man who honors God. He's a man who totally yields himself to God. He's a man who submits to God, who obeys God, who trusts God. He's a man who is morally sound, morally sound, morally sound. He's a man who has a positive attitude. He's a man who is polite, tenderness, and a man who is warm, and a man who is kind. That's what it is, to be a man who fears the Lord. If you look at what I've just read out to you, I'm talking about somebody who demonstrates the fruit of the Spirit. That's what I just said. That's what I said. Somebody who demonstrates the fruit of the Spirit. As you submit yourself to the workings and the leading of the Holy Spirit, you begin to see yourself walking in the fear of the Lord. And you begin to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You begin to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit. You begin to reveal kindness, gentleness, meekness, peace, love. That's what a woman wants to see in you. That's what a man who fears the Lord is all about. A man who exemplifies, a man who demonstrates the fruit of the Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. A man who demonstrates the fruit of the Spirit, and that is exactly where I'm going today. The fruit of the Spirit is love, is joy, is peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's a man that any woman wants to be with. That's a man. A man who, who, who radiates joy. A man who is peaceful. A man who is loving. loving. A man who, is, who has a long suffering. A man who, who is gentle, who is kind. That's a man that any woman wants to be around. In order to build a thriving family, fathers must take the lead. Every father must set the tone for his family because he is regarded as the head of the family by God. As fathers, we are called to provide leadership, guidance, and an example that the whole family 
can look to. Remember that as goes the father, so goes the family. I will pick up this message from here next time. Remember that you can write to us with all your comments and inquiries. All the details you need are on your screen right now. Till the next time on Maximize Life, God bless you. According to religious think tank Barna Research Group, non-Christians divorce at a rate of 38% versus born-again Christians who divorce at a rate of 33%. Question, if Christians are the light of the world, how can Christian marriages be falling apart at almost the same rate as those who don't know God? Don't be a statistic. Say no to a monotonous marriage and make sure you and your spouse are aboard the MV Jewel. Sunday 29th May from 5 to 9 p.m. During the married couple's boat cruise, enjoy a delicious three-course gourmet meal, live entertainment, music, and the best sights London has to offer at only 100 pounds per couple. That is 50 pounds per person. During this romantic black tie event, you'll make magical memories and recapture that honeymoon feeling. For more details, phone us on 020-88-555-888 or visit our website, newwine.co.uk or you can even check us out on social media, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at New Wine London. Tickets are going quickly, so don't be caught out. Get yours today at New Wine Church, Gateway House, John Wilson Street, Woolwich, London, SE18, 6QQ. This May, bring your friends and family out for family convention with thought-provoking teaching on Sundays and prayer meetings for your family on Fridays. Also, attention all couples. Back by popular demand is your cruise along the River Thames. Take in all the London landmarks while you dance the evening away and rekindle your romance. And singles, we haven't forgotten about you. Prepare for a bank holiday weekend of fun, 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 and food, food, food. And it all takes place with a prayer meeting on Friday, a Q&A on Saturday, and a barbecue to remember on bank holiday Monday. 